I'm sure by now you've heard about the modern phenomena of quiet quitting or the term to describe how fed up employees progressively do less because they're feeling underappreciated. Hopefully it doesn't sound too familiar. And as you can imagine, for a laundry list of reasons, employers aren't too keen on this practice. Now, the reason I bring this up is the fact that this very situation is playing out at the biological level within each and every one of us right now. So much so that it's hypothesized to be a major driver of aging. And uh, guess who the employer is in this scenario? Yep. But don't worry too much. Stick around, and You'll see what you can do about it. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are exploring the biological phenomena of our cells, quiet quitting, and why this happens to be a major driver behind the onset of disease and dysfunction, but also why there's hope aka ways to get these cellular employees happy and productive again at least according to some new hot off the scientific streets research that we're gonna review highlighting some interesting ways that we can take care of these disgruntled biological workers via a solution that i'll just say wouldn't be ethical in the real world but we'll get to that First, let's take a quick dive into what actually cellular quiet quitting is. And no, this is not its official scientific name. The phenomena that we are referring to here is cellular senescence, which is when a cell stops its natural cellular cycle of dividing due to an accumulation of damage. Kind of like an employee who stops working hard because they're feeling underappreciated. But here's the thing. Unlike a normal scenario where a damaged cell would trigger cellular recycling or program cell death to mitigate the spread of this damage to fellow cells, these senescent cells just sit there, disgruntled, secreting bioactive compounds known as cytokines that drive up inflammation in the area, creating a toxic workplace and ultimately damaging more cells in the area that, wouldn't you know it, enter a senescent state. Kind of like a disgruntled employee convincing other good employees to join the quiet quitting party. And I know what you're thinking. What assholes? And you're partially right. However, the better question to ponder is why? Or what's causing these passive aggressive email typing assholes to form in the first place? Ah, now we're getting places. And let's start this answer at the cellular level. Some of the common happenings that can cause a cell to enter a state of senescence include telomere shortening, genotoxic stress, DNA damage, and inflammation. All right, interesting. But what causes all that? Well, there are a number of natural processes like fighting an infection, but coincidentally, the more serious and prevalent drivers happen to be the commonalities of the modern Western lifestyle norms we humans so mindlessly follow. You know, the 24-7 ultra-processed eating, indoor sedentary behavior, chemicals and pharmaceuticals galore, and chronically deprived, disaligned sleep. Begging the question, do these disgruntled employees have a point? I mean, years to decades of a dysfunctional work environment would intoxicate even the biggest kiss asses, and rightfully so. And I wanna add, despite first thought and what we've talked about thus far, this process of senescence isn't inherently nefarious. In fact, it's the body trying to protect itself. And here's why. This cell cycle arrest stops the multiplication of potentially compromised cells preventing their division into bigger, more systemic problems. However, as you can imagine, the more senescent employees that we have within our body, the less productive and efficient 
we become. And it's also been observed that this senescence is positively correlated with age. As modern science has displayed that enough of these cells begin to accumulate by midlife to start showing up on scans and steadily increase with age from there, trending ever so nicely with disease risk. Now, this is not to say that cellular senescence is the sole driver of biological aging, because it most certainly is not, but it also has accumulated enough evidence to make it one of the top contenders, which makes any therapy or intervention to wipe out or permanently fire these employees a powerful potential tool in the longevity toolbox. Something this new study found some rather interesting insights on. Let's take a look. An international group of scientists sought to explore if senescent cells could be eliminated via natural dietary means. To do this, they built on previous research targeting senescent cells with a biotanical extract high in phytochemicals to see if a modest dose could reduce their effects or eliminate them altogether. Choosing salvia henke, a natural extract found in herbs, they administered doses both in vitro, a lab petri dish, and directly to older mice via their water to observe the effects. And what they found was rather interesting. First, in vitro, they observed that the extract prevented chemically induced senescent phenotypes, corroborating the previous discovered anti-senescent effects of this extract in a lab environment. Pretty cool. However, things got real interesting in the mouse model, where the administration of the extract via the mice's water displayed a reduction in age-related symptoms such as fur modifications and posture, tissue accumulation of senescence, DNA damage markers, and muscle strength, while notably increasing the mice's lifespan. You don't say. The other interesting factor here was that these beneficial effects were observed across various tissue types. And this treatment was started at a relatively late mice age, about 20 months, when mice already begin to display age-associated deterioration. Now, when diving deeper into the extract itself, researchers were able to track back some of the impactful compounds at play, one of them being Lutalin, a phytonutrient known for its antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-cancer properties. Also one known for having a previous history of fighting senescence through the modulation of sirtuins and the AMPK mTOR pathway. And if you were wondering, this compound is actually much more present than you may think, being commonly found in many fruits, vegetables, and herbs including celery, apples, green peppers, parsley, artichoke leaves, olive oil, rosemary, lemons, peppermint, sage, thyme, carrots, broccoli, onion leaves, and cabbage. Now, of course, more research is certainly needed here, as in vitro and mice experiments in no way guarantee similar results in humans. However, it does make you think. What other strategies may be useful in getting our cellular employees out of this quiet quitting senescent state? Well, there happens to be a few. And as we often see, the best approach is once again twofold. First, and most importantly, in my eyes at least, rebelling against that aforementioned modern Western lifestyle and instead building one that promotes efficient cellular operations. This means consistently putting your body in an environment for it to biologically prosper, giving it real whole nourishing foods. Daily exercise, more nature, high quality sleep, good circadian alignment, and managing stress on the reg. This will not only drive up cellular efficiency, but drive down the inflammatory dysfunction, such as free radical leak, which seem to be one of the main causes of cellular senescence. Strengthening the immune system, aka making it more precise and specific, and ultimately delaying the onset and accumulation of these disgruntled cellular employees. Now, that was the prevention part. Let's now move to the termination one. Here, the hot topic on the scientific streets is sanolytics, or drugs and compounds that trigger programmed cell death specifically 
in senescent cells. This is a new and emerging field that is built around developing cocktails of compounds that induce these quiet quitting senescent cells to finally get fired. These cocktails often contain a mix of pharmaceuticals and natural extracts that can trigger processes such as programmed cell death in these compromised cells while leaving the undamaged healthy cells relatively unfazed. A difficult task indeed. Now, if you've been around this channel, that concept may sound a little familiar because there are also some lifestyle interventions that can induce similar cellular happenings, specifically exercise, intermittent fasting, and as we saw today, phytochemicals found in the very foods that we eat. Pretty cool, I know. And even though the bulk of research here has been in vitro and in mice, and much more data is needed, the preliminary results have been pretty damn encouraging. Fasting and exercise show potential through being potent stimulators of cellular recycling and programmed cell death processes such as autophagy and apoptosis, while also having many unique traits that reduce inflammation, improve mitochondria function, and thus lower free radical leak, boost cellular repair processes, and create an overall biochemical environment where weak, leaky, damaged cells struggle to survive. Which happens to be the exact opposite environment that 24 seven snacking and sitting on your butt all day creates. Thus, one of my long-term strategies has been early eating with an 18-hour nightly fast and some good old moderately intense exercise each morning, as we talk about in these two videos here. Now, the third lifestyle intervention, as we once again saw today, is the food we eat. In this case, specifically the phytochemical rich ones, which are natural compounds found across all the families of plant-derived foods that we eat, acting not only as a source of their pretty colors, because they're found in the plant pigments, but also as defense compounds, deterring many of the natural predators to plants such as insects and pests. And it just so happens, these silent nutrients make quite the splash when they interact with our cellular cell, often stimulating a hormetic response or low dose stress to our cells, which drive these strong and efficient ones to hunker down and become stronger, and the weak, damaged, leaky, mutated ones, aka the ones with the highest likelihood of triggering the processes of dysfunction and disease, to program their civilized, self-destruct and recycling processes apoptosis and autophagy. And where do you think senescent cells lay on that spectrum? Yeah. Thus, another reason to eat your fruits and veggies. All that being said, this is still a new and emergent field, one with a whole lot of research still needed to be done. But that doesn't mean you can't start hedging your bets and create an environment that will excite your cellular workforce to get up and after it each and every damn day. I mean, come on. Imagine having a body operating as smoothly as a finely tuned business like the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Okay, we're trapped, everyone for himself! Okay, okay. let's go! Let's go! Get out of the Okay, okay. Oh, um, okay. Maybe production team could have uh, used a different clip, but you get the point. 